What's up scholars? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about Robin and Maria's fight from Wano. This is a much shorter fight than the other two I've previously covered, but it is definitely an impactful fight and it gets uh, just lets Robin show her prowess as a fighter, as a thinker, and just personally this fight for her is one of my favorites that she gets to do because of what it means because of what she's standing up for and i just absolutely love robin and in, in this fight so we're gonna go ahead and talk about it because robin is my favorite female character in one piece and i always love seeing moments where she shines and this is one of the best moments she's had in a while and i was i was so happy for her in this fight and she and Brooke are kind of in this fight at the same time even though they're taking on two very separate people they're both in the same room together fighting so I will be talking about Brooke just a little bit in this fight as well but this is mainly Robin's fight so this fight starts off with Robin coming to Sanji's aid Maria has set a trap for Robin and Sanji has called to Robin for help which I have discussed this in length in many different videos about how important it is that Sanji has actually done this, why it actually means so much, not just for Sanji as a character, but for Robin as a character and him depending on her. And I love that so much because even though she knows she could be walking in a trap, the fact that Sanji has called for her, has asked for her help, means so much and she's confident in herself and in her abilities that she's going to be able to get out of whatever Maria has laid down for her to trap her and with Brooke's help she's able to do just that. And I do love Robin so much in this because yes she comes to Sanji's aid when others are making fun of him for calling for help she comes helps him get out of this trap lets him leave to go fight another battle and she says thank you so much for calling for me thank you for relying on me and of course oh, the fact that she tells Sanji thank you the fact that she thanks him for relying on her that means so much to the both of them one because Sanji is so afraid that he's gonna put Robin in danger he never wants to put the ladies he loves in danger but he was willing to do so because he trusts Robin and he knows she can handle herself so much that growth from Sanji is rewarded by Robin thanking him saying I've got this thank you for relying on me I'll take care of it from here you go take care of what you need to take care of and Robin throughout this fight she's not only standing up for the Straw Hats as a whole as a crew she is standing up for Sanji a lot in this fight both physically and with her words, how she rebukes a lot of the things Maria is saying about Sanji. And I just love that little detail because it truly shows that Robin understands Sanji so deeply. And she also under understands the respect that he has for her, the trust and faith that he has in her. And that makes her even more determined to stand up and fight, to do whatever she needs to do to fight this battle that he has entrusted her with. It's really, really cool. I really love the whole premise for this fight because, yes, they're wanting Robin for many different reasons. One, because she's Robin. <laughs> she knows the history of the Plenty Glitch. She knows what happened on Ohara. They, I mean, not just the government has been after her, but Kaido is after her too because she can read the Pony Glyphs and that's another tactic that he could be, he could have used further down the line to help him in his goal to be King of the Pirates or whatever he wanted. So Maria was going to capture Robin in his stead. Robin doesn't let it happen because one, we've seen several times throughout the Wano arc Robin saying no thanks I'd rather die than do that whatever. Um, I don't remember who said it but someone was asking me like oh well you'll have to like be subjugated to Kaido in a sense I'm paraphrasing here and Robin says no thanks I'd rather die than, die than do that so we see Robin being so confident in who she is and so self-assured 
in her crew that she has a place to belong that she what she is not going to leave them no matter what and i love it so much we see that faith we see that confidence on both sides and robin gets to display it in full form in this fight against maria the actual fight itself when robin gets there and she breaks through all the traps maria had originally set up and then these mirages hallucinations start coming through robin sees her mother she sees she sees professor clover and then she sees saul and she's of course going to be very emotional upon seeing these people again even if they are false and brooke is beside her saying no robin don't be fooled don't be tricked these aren't real and robin though she is overcome by emotion upon seeing these people again she is not tricked by these hallucinations and is able to destroy them pretty easily and it leads to one of the saddest lines <laughs> that we just get offhandedly in this arc i mentioned it when i was first doing my review over this section of wano but the way robin and brooke are like trauma bonding <laughs> with each other and just the way they offhandedly say this to each other and then laugh about it mid fight just breaks my heart when they're talking about the mirages and Robin looks at him and says you didn't have any problem with it either and Brooke responds saying well after 50 years of practice wishing every day that the death of your friends was only a dream one does get used to being hurt by illusions and then Robin looks at him with a smile and says, Oh, I suppose we have a lot in common. Like, you can't, you can't just casually drop one of these saddest things and then just leave. Like, that's, that hurts. That, that, mm, that hurt me when I first read it and it still hurts me now because these two have suffered so much from losing their friends, losing their loved ones, and being alone for so many years. They have a, they do have a lot in common. And the fact they're just casually talking about it, casually sharing this trauma with each other, it just hurts. Like, yes, on one hand, you can find it funny, you can find it very comedic, that it's like, oh, must be the trauma. But on the other hand, it's like, no, it is the trauma that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very depressing. I, I love that line because of how deep it insinuates their loneliness has been and their pain has been, but also it bonds them together in the fight to have more trust for each other in that moment. And it shows later on, I'm skipping, but later on when Robin is going to fight fully face Maria by herself and Brooke says do you mind if I go ahead and just let you take her by yourself I'm gonna deal with this and Rama says thank you for asking I was, I was I've been waiting for this and they have full trust in each other to take on their own separate battles but still support each other through it and even when Maria is talking all of this crap about Robin when Robin is taking blow after blow she's talking smack to Brooke saying that Brooke needs to run away or needs to come in and help and oh what does Brooke say he says that was a very foolish thing I heard you say if I were you I would be running for my life because he understands Robin so well he knows Robin so well and then he trusts Robin so much I just I love that. This is such an underrated fight in my opinion. I don't see people talking about this a lot and it's such an underrated fight because it really does highlight the trust and the bonds that these two straw hats in particular have and feel towards their crew and towards each other. Brooke, uh, Brooke showed up too because one, he was with Robin and he also understands Sanji. He knew how important it was that Sanji called for help called robin for help so of course he was going to be there to be with his friend and to support his friend both sanji and robin and then of course he's just gonna have absolute faith in robin miss robin to take care of business and have zero doubt in his mind that she is ever in danger because he knows she can take care of herself i just ah, oh, i love it so much i love it and it's a they know they can take care of things on their own, 
but they're gonna be there as a just in case to have their back. I, just, I really love that. I love it so much. Back towards the fight, Robin and Brooke spend a lot of time running from Maria because she's causing all of this fire and Robin is having to take Brooke and dodge the fire and find a place for them to stand where it's solid ground and it's not affected by the fire and they're both holding their own but that's when Brooke asks Robin and I love it he says he says Robin do you quite mind if I leave her to you and Robin says thank you I was hoping you'd ask I love it so much it's so good you get Brooke taking on the kind of minions that Maria always had around her and while Robin focuses just on Maria and that's when she pulls out the like giganto uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's the giant Robin behind her. And Maria is talking smack about Sanji at this point. And Robin's words when she looks at Maria asking about, be like, oh, well, did I hurt your feelings talking about Sanji this way? And Robin says, no, he's a very kind man. You don't need to know what it means that Sanji relied on me for help. He is truly worthy of being the king. The wings of the king of the pirates. That one sentence says so much about Robin's faith in Sanji, about Sanji's faith in Robin, and how much Robin truly respects and cares for Sanji and the rest of her crew, in fact, because she's like, you don't need to understand why he's such a great person. You don't need to understand why he did what he did. I do and that's what matters because I understand him because I understand what he did I will fight for him and as they're fighting Robin is very confident throughout the entire course of the fight even when she is taking a lot of blows even when Maria is le landing all these heavy hits on her Robin still is very confident in what she's doing very confident in the strategy that she has come up with and Maria talks a big game and she does have the power to back it up she is landing pretty heavy damage on Robin however she's very short-sighted in the fight and that leads to her downfall Robin is very broad in what she's thinking about what moves that she is capable of what she can use to her advantage how she can change the situation around her she's she's very open-minded about the entire aspect and what her battlefield actually is while Maria is more focused on the immediate what's right in front of her Robin is taking a look on everything around her and that's what makes a huge difference because as she's getting hit and she's taking blow after blow she's thinking about Koala and Sabo when she spent her two years in the Revolutionary Army she's thinking about how Koala taught her Fishman Karate and how Sabo taught her the dragon claw fist thing as well like they offered to teach her all of these things and we see her go through this training with them how they inspired her to use like her palms use her fighting skills better especially with the devil fruit that she has which you can actually see her devil fruit right up there it's so pretty and instead of just focusing on the slaps that she's always done koala teaches her the importance of the palms that she can make her attack so much stronger and Robin's thinking about how they have been so useful to her before this point up to this point what she's learned has been so helpful and she's thinking about how she can apply that in this situation and because she has kept her eye on the entire environment around her she shoots her hand up into the sky to do a palm strike up to the ceiling breaks the ceiling and all of the debris falling down puts out the fire that Maria has started. And through that, that's when Robin, I love this so much because this is a similarity she has with Zoro. They are willing, I mean, really with most of these straw hats, if I'm being honest, but she is willing to become anything to help her crew, to help the people she loves, even a demon and she emerges from the rubble this other form a demon form of Robin and it's so cool it is so cool on why she does this I will talk about it in just a second 
But she rises from the rubble saying, I can be a demon if I have to. I'll do it for the people who truly need me, for the people who are counting on me. And with that form, she is able to just destroy Maria. She does some heavy damage to Maria and just takes her out. And as Robin is doing this, Brooke on the other side, he takes out the others with his swordsmanship and they kind of finish it at the same time. And that's kind of the end of the fight. Robin obviously is spent after that and she's so exhausted that Brooke ends up having to carry her away. But she doesn't mind that because she protected her crew. She did what she needed to do and now she's like, okay, yes, help me out. In this fight, we get to see Robin displaying her loyalty, her trust, and her confidence in herself and others and in her fighting ability, which is something we have not seen too much of. We've seen portions of her fight before in, in the other arcs after the time skip, but not like this, not pushed to the limit like this, where she truly just gets to be like, okay, I will be whatever I need to be to win this fight, to stand up for the people that have put their faith in me, that have put their trust in me. I am going to win. And we get to see that on full display here, and I absolutely love it. And what is so special about Robin being this demon, this demon form, is that it's part of her overcoming this demon child allegation and, and name that has been stuck on her since Ohara. Since she was a survivor of Ohara and she has been on the run all of her life, people have always called her a demon child and that has hurt her for so many years, that has plagued her and followed her and now because of the growth, because of the healing that she has had because of Luffy and these straw hats, how she has been able to nurture her strengths, been able to nurture her dream, how she has been able to have this confidence and loyalty and trust built up, not just from others to her, but she can trust others herself now. She is able to put her trust and faith in others, and they are able to respond just the same to her. Because of all of this growth and development, that those demon child allegations, that name, doesn't hurt as much as it did. And by becoming a demon, by being in this demon form to do whatever she needs to do to protect the ones she loves, that is her getting to overcome that part of her past by saying, fine, I'll embrace it. I will be the demon you feared I was to protect the ones I love. I just, I love it. I love it so dearly because it really gets to showcase, it just really gets to make Robin shine and showcase her growth, not just physically and uh, in a fighting sense, but also mentally, emotionally as well because the one, the casual conversation she has with Brooke and how they're able to talk about it in a lighthearted way despite how sad that conversation is. The fact that she's able to easily go through those mirages, those illusions like they're nothing. The way that she's able to stand up not just for herself but for Sanji and for Brooke and say no, these people have put their faith in me. I'm going to fight and she doesn't back down. She's not backing away. She's not shying away from this fight. She's facing it full on for the ones who have put their trust in her. And I just think it's wonderful. Robin takes a great stand in this fight for Sanji, for standing up for Sanji and what Sanji has believed in and for the fact that Sanji allowed himself to put his trust in Robin and maybe put Robin in danger but he trusted her enough to be okay. Robin understood how much something like that meant coming from Sanji and she was able to rise up to the occasion to that challenge so that Sanji wouldn't have to fear that anything was going to happen to her so that Sanji wouldn't have to regret calling for her help. She was able to respond to his call in full so that he doesn't have to worry about anything. That is her response to him. That is her putting her full faith in Sanji as he has put his full faith in her because she's like, you have trusted me with this. 
I will respond to that trust by giving you nothing to worry about. I will handle it. Thank you for doing this for me. You don't have to worry. And by winning that fight, it just comes to a completion that is like, yes, he doesn't have to worry. She's fine. And I also love for Brooke, the fact that Brooke asked her like, is it okay if I ask that I leave her to you? And Robin's like, thank you for asking me. I just love the polite way that they're like asking and thinking each other in this fight from like Robin thanking Sanji and then Robin thanking Brooke the way Brooke asks her. It's so cute and such a great dynamic. And I just, I love that Brooke and Robin have this like mutual bond, this mutual trust and respect for one another. And he's just like, I'm gonna leave her to you. I'm gonna take care of the others so that you can focus on this fight. And Robin is just like, thank you so much. I was hoping you'd do this for me. I will take care of her. I'm not gonna worry about the others because I know you've got them. It's just such a beautiful, simplistic way to show respect and trust within a group. And I love it so dearly. It is beautiful. And Robin's powers in this fight is impeccable. I love the way that she creatively fights, the way she uses her hands, the way she uses the Fishman Karate, and then her two different forms, the giant form and then the demon form. Those are so cool and I'm really excited to see how they're used in the future, in future fights, how she's going to do that. I'm just, I really liked how they did it in the anime. I did watch this fight in the anime. I thought it was really cool. I loved how they did that with the atmosphere and oh, it was so cool in the anime. They did a great job. Loved it in the manga, loved it in the anime as I have with all the fights I've been covering. They did a great job with that and <laughs> this is just such a great moment for Robin. This was a great Robin fight. But that's all for this video. This was a shorter fight to cover, but I think it still is very important. It's a very important moment for Robin because she, just because of how she gets to stand up for herself and for her crew. I just, it's, it's wonderful and I love to see it. It's great. But that's all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I will be doing another Egghead review this Thursday. Um, there's a lot going on, so be on the lookout for that. Um, that one's going to be a really crazy one to cover with the chapters I've read up to. Other than that, make sure you go check out the Zoro vs. King fight that I did last week, and then the Sanji vs. Queen fight I did the week before if you want to see all the fights I've covered from Wano this month. Other than that, make sure you check out my channel if you haven't seen any of the other videos I've done. Go do that. I've got a lot of different One Piece videos and some other videos not related to One Piece on there. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time scholars.